Continuous monitoring of the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. What's the most important word or phrase in here? Oxygen. Haven't heard it yet. I've heard parts of it. Saturation. Uh, part, again, that's the only part of it. O2 sat. O2 sat. Oxygen saturation. That's the key. That's the key. Which test monitors oxygen saturation? Which condition results in lung tissue filling up with fluid or pus, inflammatory cells, and fibrin? instructor is teaching lung anatomy to a group of students. Which statement relates appropriately to the student's learning of lung anatomy? Are we looking for something right or something wrong? Right. Looking for something right. For pneumonia, which nursing diagnosis has the highest priority? <clears throat> Remember how we prioritize nursing problems. Performing a respiratory assessment on a patient. Which assessment findings indicate to the nurse that the patient has a history of a long standing chronic respiratory disease? Select all that up flat. The 
nurse finds the patient in cardiopulmonary arrest with no pulse or respirations. Which oxygen delivery device will the nurse use for this patient? Are you keeping track of your answers so as we learn? Go through the day. Which ones you picked the first time versus the second time? Or by Wednesday, we might not be for Wednesday. <laughs> and then a patient is admitted to the emergency department with difficulty breathing. Which patient response identified by the nurse causes the most concern? The nurse is assigned a group of patients. Which patient finding will the nurse identify as a factor leading to increased risk for impaired gas exchange? for the adequacy of ventilation. What assessment finding would indicate that the patient has good ventilation or adequate ventilation? Select all that apply. I don't want the word good either, but you know what I mean. They're ventilating. gas exchange, one or the other. So in this slide, I want you to look at it. It's very complicated. And tell me the three body systems. I don't think this, this is not a slide. What three, three body systems are involved in the process of gas exchange? Pretty simple. I don't feel I need to read the slide. It's a 
pretty simple process. You breathe in oxygen, eventually gets attached to a red blood cell, finds its way to the capillaries, uh, in your alveoli, or even in uh, even in your cells, all your cells, the oxygen goes in, carbon monoxide comes out. So. <coughs> I know you know this. I just need to hear you say it to me out loud. Somebody got stabbed and there is bright red blood coming out. Is that oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood? Oxygenated blood. And that usually comes from what? Arteries, because arteries are full of the oxygen taking it to the rest of your body. So on the flip side, the blue side, right, usually you represent that as red and blue, right? So red is oxygenated, blue or dark blood is deoxygenated, right? <laughs> so where does that, what if somebody got stabbed and it was all dark blood coming out? Veins, right? Because veins are taking that deoxygenated blood back out through the system to get oxygen again, right? You can see that loop in your head, yeah. Yes, at some point. That's where the exchange occurs. Yes, perfect, yes. So in order for all this oxygen to get moved about, we need to have an intact cardiovascular system. And unfortunately, we don't speak of it. Well, maybe fortunately, because I can't test you on the cardiovascular system, even as it relates to gas exchange, because you haven't learned it yet, technically. You get gas exchange, full of electrolyte, acid-base balance, next semester, 21. But we can only really speak to the respiratory side. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? And to me, it kind of leaves a hole, but I uh, kind of talk about it. You can't, I can't test you on it. Because we never really talk, other than knowing like the ape to man thing. But this is a great picture, just showing what I just explained. And if you um, need more uh, information on it, this is, uh, this is literally normal anatomy and physiology here. This, this link is to um, the Yoast, the evolve.com, where you have, well, I don't know what you would have, a, uh, if you ever bought the access or not, <laughs> every student has access to evolve.com. If you want to know normal anatomy and physiology or just want to freshen up on all the stuff, this is that link in there. You have that link in your slide deck, right? Yeah. So when, when the oxygen is confined to the, um, to the red blood cell, we call it oxyhemoglobin. Pretty easy to remember, right? And then, of course, this is another graphic of how oxygen comes in and how carbon dioxide comes out. Why am I keep showing you all this? Because we're going to do a slide update in a minute. So, uh, the pulse ox measures oxygen saturation. That's all it does. The pulse ox is literally a, a light meter. That measures the color of, you know, of based on the light. That's all it is. That the pulse ox is a non-invasive way to get an idea of what, um, how much oxygen is in your blood. So it's <laughs> there's quite it's an awesome tool, uh, but that's all it is measuring is the percentage of oxygen saturation. And what so what can negatively impact your pulse ox readings? Nail polish. Nail polish. In this case, if you see through it. Yeah. What else? Cold, 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 cold. So if your extremity is cold, odds are there's it's not perfusing as well, so you don't get oxygenated blood down there. You probably have venous blood sitting there, but you don't have oxygenated blood down there. What else? Something more central, like that. So you, you can do work. So that was my next question: is pulse oxes are you do them on adults easily because on their fingers, third level. 